What up, everybody, and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades, and today we're going to take a trip in the Wayback Machine, go back a couple of years maybe, and revisit a former previous review subject. Um, this knife, for whatever year it was that I originally reviewed it, won Budget Knife of the Year hands down. With zero competition, this is the Kubi Knives KU179, um, the Eris model, E-R-I-S. I have no idea what that means. For those of you that care, uh, Google be your friend is all I can say. Uh, Kubi Knives, another of those high-quality Chinese import brands. Uh, they make a very, very wide range of product, all the way from $29 up to over $200 for some of their higher-end titanium frame locks. Uh, but most of their product is very reasonable. It is under $100 and very competitive with other brands like Civivi and Best Tech, brands like that, uh, in both um, price-to-value proposition uh, fit and finish, overall quality, level of materials, all of those things, it's a very competitive. And like I say, this knife dominated for budget knife of the year, whatever year that was. It was pre-pandemic, so it doesn't matter anymore. That's just history. Um, this knife was the first product that I bought from Kubi Knives. Actually, I take that back. I did not buy this knife from Kubi. Um, Jeffrey Orthopedic put me into contact with a rep, a retailer for Kubi on Amazon, and they sent me this knife for free to review. Now, when I got this knife in hand, before I did the review or anything, I thought, this is pretty badass. It's pretty badass. I want to get the other version of it. So I contacted that retailer and said, hey, I don't want another free knife. I'll pay for the knife, but I want the other version of this knife. They sent it to me, so I had both in hand to do the review. Now, I have not mentioned price so far, and the reason is, is I believe this model is out of production. You could only get it on the secondary mar uh, market. Maybe you can find it in OS somewhere if you look around. I don't know. Uh, I did a very quick look. It's no longer available on uh, Amazon. It's no longer available on places like AliExpress and DHgate. Uh, the Kubi website has, shows it is out of stock. So I believe it is actually out of production. Now, when I got this knife, which you cannot buy anymore, uh, they were $49.99. $49.99. Let me tell you what you can get or could get for that. The blade steel is D2. Yes, not impressive, but it's still D2. You know pretty much, given quality of heat treat, what you are going to get out of D2. Um, the handle scales in this particular version are solid carbon fiber. There is no G10. They are nice thick slabs of carbon fiber. Um, it uses nested stainless liners that are not weight relieved. Uh, you have a milled titanium backspacer, a milled titanium pocket clip, um, and then you've got Torx hardware on it, T8 on the pivot, T6 is everywhere else. It's got ceramic bearings on the pivot and a ceramic detent. Uh, the action is fabulous, very snappy. Um, the blade's a little light to drop down just on its own weight, but it is very smooth, uh, a very fidget friendly. I'm sorry, I can't really show you that. I don't have a lot of space between the camera and the tabletop here. Um, but it is, it is equal to those other brands that I mentioned in every way. And they were selling at $49. Now, immediately after I did the review on this, the prices shot up to $59 just because Baz on Blades has a, such a wide reach. I have so many people you know, upwards of two or three dozen people watching my videos. 
So I'm super duper influencer, uh, internet influencer here as far as the knife world goes with, you know, potentially dozens of uh, followers and views. Um, so the price went up. Everybody was reviewing this. Uh, all the channels were. It was such a smoking hot deal from this company. $49 for all of this, solid carbon fiber, uh, milled titanium, backspacer, pocket clips. Yeah, I know it's D2, but it's still, it's D2, okay? It's not some freaking uh, super crappy 420 HC or something like that. Um, this was a smoking deal. Uh, by the time things were all said and done, I saw prices as high as up in the low 80s for these knives. It had increased from $49 into the low 80s, almost doubling its price. That is incredible that anybody could price ramp, aggressively price ramp a product and sell it uh, just just as aggressively as they ramped up the price. Uh, because even when it got up, it was $59 and $69. Even then, that's still a pretty decent deal. I mean, you look at knives from other brands, competitive brands, if they were in these exact same materials, they're going to be in that $60 or $70 range with some of those brands they may be even higher. And then some brands just don't offer things like solid carbon fiber on their budget knives. Um, still very competitive even when the price started stretching out. Now, let's talk about some numbers on this thing. And uh, then we'll do size comparison. We'll pull out a, a standard here. You know what it is. It's going to be a paramilitary too. That's the standard don't you know? Um, this is a full-size EDC type knife. Um, you're looking at a three and a half inch blade length, slightly less than nine centimeters. The handle length, four and five eighths of an inch or slightly less than 12 centimeters. That gives you an overall length of eight and a sixteenth inches or 20 and a half centimeters. And the weight three and a quarter ounces or 92 grams. So that means that this three and a half inch blade, okay, with pretty much three and a half inches of cutting edge, because the cutting edge comes in, it drops straight under the four part of the handle scale. Um, we are well under that uh, one ounce per inch of blade length sort of Cinderella zone that you want to be um, in an EDC knife or a lot of the EDC crowd wants that lighter weight in their knife. Um, let's bring out the paramilitary two. We're going to get them both out here. We're going to bring out the SMKW uh, Arctic Storm paramilitary two. And you can see they are uh, given the changes in aspect ratio. They are exactly the same size for the most part, lengthwise, lengthwise. Um, the Kubi does have slightly more, maybe a sixteenth of an inch more cutting edge length, but you can see the uh, distances from the blade tip to the forward, most forward point of the handle scales are pretty much the same. Uh, you can see here, as far as your handle lengths, they are pretty much the same. And here is what really stands out to me. Um, this knife is a much narrower profile than the Paramilitary 2 is. And we will close both up here and show you how much narrower it is. It is much, much, much narrower. Okay, we're, you know, I've got them even here back on the spine. So you can see how much narrower this knife is in the paramilitary too. In that respect, it is a much more efficient design. Um, that is something that I have never, oh my God, that I have never accused the paramilitary two of is being an efficient design. It is a very handle heavy. Um, it is a very wide design. As great as it is, that is sort of a, a negative on that design. Um, this knife, 
Um, I'm going to say overall it is not as attractive a design because of the blade profile. It's sort of a, this sort of banana porn dick sort of profile. I'm not exactly sure what they're going for with that blade profile. Um, so it's not quite as attractive and that does help sell a knife, but it is much more efficient as far as uh, the size and even the weight balanced out with blade length and cutting edge. Um, and that is an efficiency factor that you have to take into consideration when you are looking at knives. Uh, it, is, it is more important to some people than others, uh, but it is something to consider. Now, the big difference here is Chinese knife that was $49.99 versus an American-made knife um, that was a, you know, a special drop for Smoky Mountain Knife Works and was $200. So it was four times the cost of this knife. Now, it is an American-made knife from an American brand that's going to carry four times the resale value as well. So I'm not really you know, comparing the worth of these knives. I totally understand the Spider Co. is a better knife. Oh my God, for you guys that are going to come in and start defending Spider Co. because I say it's an inefficient design, the, just, just be honest. It kind of is in those respects. It is a better knife, though. It's a better knife than this Kubi. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's a better knife with better value, better resale value. But this knife, for $49, when I originally picked it up, uh, even at $59, which is what it went up to pretty quickly after I reviewed it, didn't have anything to do with me. I played around with that a little bit, but it didn't. It's just a lot of people that were reviewing it, and they were selling them out on Amazon. Now, it's sort of interesting they got this knife in at such a good weight because it's not super thin blade stock. I can't remember what it was, but it's a, you know, it's a, it's around an eighth of an inch. So you're around, you know, 115, 120 thousandths uh, stock thickness there. Uh, but it is a, a narrow blade design uh, with a lot of blade ground away. You have basically two primary grinds almost approaching um, an asymmetrical type of dagger grind with a false edge. Uh, you know, I mean, it's not definitely not a false edge. It is a, a swedge. It's not a false edge. But in respects of the grind intruding on the blade profile like it does, it is very much a big swedge grind. Uh, so with the narrow blade length, and it's not super heavy blade stock, but it's substantial, um, it does save some weight here. It's interesting that they did not weight relieve the liners at all, and they are very well fitted. Um, unless you knew better, you know, if you handed this to somebody, they would never realize there was steel liners in there until they went to work the liner lock. Uh, they're very well nested, very well done. They're not, um, they're nested. They're nested. They're out of sight, giving it a very clean look. They did a good job on that. Kubi, um, of all the Kubi knives that I have reviewed, I've reviewed less expensive knives than even this one. I've reviewed more expensive knives from Kubi. Um, I've got a titanium frame lock from them, which in my hands and with my experience feels like a very early Riot um, titanium frame lock. Um, like the, what was it, the District 9 models, those OEM models? Uh, very much like that, because I, I did own some older um, Riot knives like that, and it, the titanium frame lock I had from Kubi feels a lot like those. So they do a they did a good job at all levels. Um, even that Persian fixed blade that I reviewed from them, even though it had a ridiculously oh my god, the tip on that thing was it was crazy. The tip was crazy thin on that fixed blade. I mean, crazy thin. Um, they've done a really good job on this thing. 
I mean, let's look at the, you know, you've got these milled titanium parts. This knife has got an overall very subdued and dark look. Uh, the blade is done in um, either a coarse bead blast, a media blast with a coarse media uh, to give it a darker look, or it was acid etched and then stone washed. Whatever it is, it does have a stone wash over whatever the primary finish was to dumb that that surface finish down to darken it down. Um, it's a it's but it's a very subdued. It's an attractive finish. It's very industrial, is what I always thought. And they carried over that theme. Uh, on this titanium hardware here. Now, the small parts are all in as machined, satin machine finish. Um, you know, it, it's just still, it's still though, it's a very sort of dark overall look. I like it. The other version had a satin blade finish. It had the same carbon fiber. Uh, it had the same titanium pocket clip and backspacer, but they were done in a satin finish and then anodized blue. So you got a pop of color back here uh, along with the brighter satin blade finish. And I ended up, uh, I think I ended up selling that other knife. I believe somebody wanted it pretty bad and couldn't find one, and I sold it to them thinking I would get another one, and then never did. Um, so there you go, the Kubi KU179 Aris. Yeah, it's a pretty decent knife. You know, I'm sort of sorry you can't get them anymore, and one thing I'm really sorry about is that they didn't do a premium version of this uh, by upgrading the blade steel because Kubi does use some premium American sourced stainless steels. Uh, they've used um, S35 and M390 that I know of, and there may be some other premium steels. They, they've worked with 14C28, which is not a premium stainless, but is a, a well-respected working class mid-grade stainless from Sandvik. Um, they should have done a version of this knife in a premium steel. I believe if they were doing this at $49.99, um, the increase in cost just with a premium blade steel and the ensuing, uh, however they finished it, and uh, more complex heat treatment that some of those steels require. Um, they could have done this knife and kept it under $100 with a premium blade steel, say like S35. Just do it in S35, and it would have been, you know, they could have sold it for $100 all day, and it would have still been a smoking hot deal. But they never did. I was always a little disappointed in that. Uh, Kubi's sort of a weird brand. They do a lot of designs that I just... I just look at them and I shake my head and I'm like, what What the hell? What's the percentage of the knife enthusiast crowd that likes designs like that? Is it Am I the minority here that, that likes more traditional, utilitarian, actually usable designs? Um, I might be because Kubi does a lot of sort of what I consider um, more extreme designs. And that's really the reason that I don't review any of their products. The, their designs just don't grab me. Um, but, I can, you know, I can't argue. They, they've got killer uh, bang for buck value. Even their lower price stuff with G10, D2, 14C28 in, uh, knives that you can get down, you know, still around the, the $40 to $50 price range. Uh, they're really well made. They're really well made. Like I say, I've reviewed, you know, cheaper and more expensive knives from Kubi, and then they were all well made. I didn't have any uh, fit, finish, action, build issues with any of them and thought all of them were a good deal at whatever price point they were at. But um, if you can find a KU-179, however way that you find it, um, I think I, I wouldn't want to pay $80 for one. Okay. Don't go out and pay $80 for one just to get it. Cause Bazon Blades took a trip in the Wayback Machine. 
Um, but if you could get one of these for $50, I would, you know, $50 is really, really, really competitive with anything that's made right now. Um, even knives like, um, you know, I'm real big on petrified fish lately. Uh, they have got some killer stuff in that $50, $60 price range. Um, it's, it's just as good as that stuff. It's just as good. So I would go, you know, I'd go $50 if I could find one of these NOS or, uh, you know, from an enthusiast in mint condition, I'd go 40 or $50 on one, but I wouldn't go that much more. Um, so look around if you like it. I, uh, this one's not for sale. I'm going to keep it. I sold the other one, uh, because I like the subdued finish on this one better. Uh, but good luck. If you want to find one, don't pay too much for it, but expect to get fantastic quality fit, finish and action out of it because that's all I ever had as far as my a uh, few experiences with Kubi knives. So there you go, the Kubi KU-179 taking a trip in the Wayback Machine here at Baz on Blades, revisiting an old friend from the past. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.